In today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can build a Warhammer 40,000 army on a budget. Keep up to date with everything at Knights at the Game Table, all you have to do is click subscribe and then hit that tiny little notification button next to it so every time we upload a new video, YouTube will be sure to let you know. So as I said, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about how to build a brand new Warhammer 40,000 army on a budget. And it doesn't matter if you already have an army and you just want to have a second one but you don't want to splash out the same amount of cash you did in the first one, or if you've never played the game before and you're just intimidated by how expensive you think it needs to be. The reality is you can build an army without spending the thousands of dollars that some people spend. And to help me with this video, I have brought in an expert on building a Warhammer 40,000 army on a budget. I brought in this guy. Let's try to bring him in here. There we are. Hello. There we hey. go. Got there in the end. Yes. So um, Kevin is one of my best friends. I've been trying to get Kevin to play Warhammer 40,000 for goodness knows how many years. And when he have 20? 20, 20 years. About 20 years. About 20 years. <laughs> and one of the reasons why he didn't get into it was the cost of miniatures and how expensive it can be to build an army. However, not only has he really got into the hobby now, he's also, I genuinely think, one of the best experts when it comes to building an army completely on a budget. Kev, what would you say about that? I would say that I've definitely found ways not to spend nearly as much money as you would have to spend if you just walk into a games workshop store with your wallet open and pick everything you want off the shelf. Now, it's so much easier to do it. I want to give you guys a big spoiler because at the very end of the video, I'm actually going to share with you some of the ways or one specific way that Kevin uses to make a profit from buying Warhammer <laughs> miniatures. So, you know, not only can you uh, can you get an army for cheap, but it is possible to actually make money from it if you're willing to put in the hard work. Um, and so we'll, we'll save that for the very end of the video. All right, Kev, so um, before I let you be unleashed onto everyone, I wanna talk about the way that I've always built budget armies because when I was a mm -hmm. teenager and I got into the hobby, it was really expensive. Uh, but at the time, there was a board game called Space Crusade. And Space Crusade was a games workshop game that came with like 30 Space Marines. Um, but some of the Space Marines had heavy weapons like missile launchers and LAS cannons, and some of them had melter guns and flamers. And you could buy a cheap copy of Space Crusade at like a local toy shop. They were always on sale. And I remember picking them up for like 20 pounds, like back in the day. And I would buy two boxes of Space Crusade and have 50 to you know 60 miniatures. And it was the start of my very first uh, Warhammer 40,000 armies. That's a big army, especially back then. Right, yeah, it's an absolutely huge army, especially back then. Nowadays, however, there is a way to still do this, um, and that is with the Horus Heresy box sets. One of my favorite stories about, um, about building an army was, uh, and Kevin knows this, uh, last year I flew to the UK to go to Warhammer World. Um, I brought my family and we all went there, we were really excited about going, and I have a, a friend of ours who's been on the channel before from Scotland, and I invited him to come to Warhammer World, and he did some research and found they had this really cool mining table that we really wanted to play on. Cut a long story short, I didn't have an army with me. I'd, I'd already left, I was already in England. And so I went into my local games workshop and they had the Betrayal of Kalth box set, which is the Horus Heresy box game. Um, and it's not officially for Warhammer 40,000, it's its own game, but all of the miniatures are real 30K miniatures, which are completely compatible with 40K. Inside the box, you get three missile launchers, you get three squads, like 30 um, tactical marines, uh, you get a dreadnought, you get a squad of terminators, and you get like two, uh, two different characters that you can build an army with. So with Terminators, a Dreadnought, two characters, and a, you know, 30 tactical marines, that's a battalion. Like That's a full uh, battalion detachment of two HQs plus three troops plus a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and there's enough weapons in there, um, missing a few, uh, but there was enough weapons to make a Devastator squad, um, which is something that I did, um, and to even make some, some veteran squads if you wanted to do that or to, to fully equip the tactical squads. And so what I did is I bought that box set and then I bought one extra squad of Space Marines, which gave me the fourth heavy weapon and the fourth whatever special weapons that I wanted for all my squads. And I managed to build a full 1,500-point uh, army for a game. And, uh, you know, granted, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't painted, but it was glued. I glued the whole army together um, and managed to play an awesome game with my buddy. So, you know, although not as cheap as it was back then with Space Crusade, for $150 uh, plus maybe an extra 25 bucks if you want to, to really kit it out, uh, so 175 total, you can build a Space Marine or Chaos Space Marine army 
um, really, you know, effective and a good one. It's not a terrible army. It's, it's a good army. Um, and, you know, you can just paint it up in different colors. So it could be Raven Guard or it could be Imperial, uh, Imperial Fists or it could be Alpha Legion. Uh, I made Alpha Legion or whatever you want. So that's one of my top tips to build a low budget uh, Space Marine army. But this pales pales into comparison with some of the techniques that Kevin has. So Kevin, do you want to share one of your top tips to build an army on a budget? Sure. Okay. Uh, there are so many. I'll get through them all um, if you give me a moment. But um, I would pick up on something you said, actually. So um, getting like a bulk of stuff and then picking out one thing off the shelf to, uh, to let you upgrade it or to add some features is one thing you always want to bear in mind. Uh, the first army I built was Orcs. And I love orcs. It's fantastic. You get in, you have a wide, all the boys, you just give it some dagger and it, it's great. Um, I picked orcs specifically because I could um, make fun of everyone playing the game by playing the game because it took them 20 years to get me into this. <laughs> but uh, when I got into them, I found that they are the most kit bash friendly army. Um, and not only is it really easy to um, put stuff together, but it also doesn't matter if you get it slightly wrong. And as I've built other armies, I've actually found this is true as well. It, it, the exactitudes don't matter if you're putting things that look right um, onto the models. Uh, but with Orcs specifically, I had uh, one of the first models I bought was a Dakajet, and I had a big bunch of boys I picked up for cheap. And after I built the Dakajet, it's, it's, uh, it's like a four model, um, like a four, four model set. There's three different other jets you can build with it, but I just built the Dakajet. That let me. Um, that left me with so many leftover rockets and missiles that I started strapping them to boy models, like across the shoulder, like a big rocket launcher. And before I knew what was going on, I had ten tank busters out of nowhere. Now tank busters will cost you. I think a box of five would be like 40, 50 bucks. But just kit bash your, your box of ten boys with your leftover rockets from your Dakar jet, and there's your there's your expensive two boxes worth of elites for like the cost of some basic troops just by itself. Yeah, and, and to go to go on that, like Orcs specifically, there was a, a boxed game um, before they had all the easy fit Primaris and Death Guard models. In seventh edition, there was a box game that was Assault. Ultramarines. Yeah, it was Assault on Sanctus Reach or Black, Black Reach. Reach. Black Assault Reach. on Black Reach. Assault on Black Reach. And it came with a bunch of Orcs and a bunch of Ultramarines. And that game specifically, you can still find in some targets. I've seen it in Walmart. Um, you know, if, if you look around and are willing to hunt, you can even find it online. Um, and there are people that even have sets that they just want to get rid of, uh, toy stores. And if you can find those, again, it's a bunch of orcs. There's an orc copter in there and it can give you some basic boys. And then like Kevin said, if you buy a box set, there's a bunch of other stuff in it, then you can convert your tank busters and suddenly you've got a whole bunch of stuff really cheaply. Absolutely. <laughs> and something else we're going to get, get onto, um, shop around and look especially in like uh, secondhand stores, uh, Half Price Books carries a load of uh, secondhand board games now. You can find things like uh, Assault on Black Reach, uh, things like Dark Imperium, which has got Death Guard and Primaris, I think. Mm -hmm. yep. um, you can find these at like half the retail price, and they're a good deal to start with. You've got a lot more stuff than you on your basic, box, basic boxes, uh, but then... What? You get it even even less. Yeah, and the, the seventh edition starter set, people don't really want anymore because the rules aren't there. But there are stores, game stores, still carrying them that know that no one really wants them. We've got a store in North Austin that still has a copy of Dark Vengeance, um, and they've, they've got it discounted because you know it's just it's all the old easy fit models. But it's a bunch of Dark Angels in there and a bunch of Chaos Marines. Boxes like this, you can uh, you can split as well. Um, the local trade groups, a huge resource. There's so many local trade groups. It's like two in Austin. There's like North Austin, the South Austin. In Warhammer groups, they both got their own trade groups. If you go in there, you often find people looking to split box sets. They're like, "Hey, the new uh, Eldar and Space Marine sets coming out. I want the Eldar. So you don't want the Space Marine? We split it 50 50 um, That's something you can do with new sets, um, and then you, you get what you want for half the price of the box. But also, you can do it with older sets and go, "Hey, I've just picked up the Gene Stealer Cults versus whoever set. Space Wolves, yeah. Who want? Who wants the Space Wolves half?" And then, you know, you take it down even further. And actually, if you really want to build an army, something that, um, you know, Games Workshop may or may not be happy about this, but I found it works really well. If you just hang out in a local Games Workshop and you get to know everybody, you learn whose armies everybody's got. When a new edition of a game comes out with a bunch of rules in it, someone's going to want the majority of that box. They're going to want one army and all the rules, all the, the measuring sticks and the dice and everything. If you just want the miniatures, you don't even have to split the box in half. You can just offer them amount of money to take the miniatures 
prices off their hands that they don't want. So you can actually end up just paying a third of the price rather than half of it and still getting half of the actual miniatures because they get the majority of the set. Because there are people that are like, yeah, the other half is just going to sit you know, in a corner. I'm not going to do anything with it. So they'll take you know, 30, 40 bucks and you've suddenly got an entire army. If you can convince two or three people to do that with a box set when it first comes out, now you've got two to three times what comes in one half that box set. That's an entire army, a giant force that makes a real staple um, and something that's worth doing. So before we get into Adam's big tip about uh, actually making some money off, uh, <laughs> off this, off the back of it as well, um, I just want to go through a few quick bullet points of, of things that you don't want to miss out on. So like I say, local trade groups. Find your local trade group on Facebook. Um, it's particularly where, where I find them. There may be some on other platforms. Um, yeah, it's also, like the Facebook Marketplace. If you go into Facebook Marketplace and you yeah. type in like Warhammer 40,000, you'll see a bunch of trade groups. And there are people there just looking to get rid of leftover stuff they don't want People anymore. cashing out from the hobby. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's a great one. I bought an entire yeah. Grainer army for a hundred bucks. An entire army. Um, so uh, secondhand game stores and bookstores. Um, join the, the, the faction groups on Facebook and other social media platforms that you're interested in because sometimes people will just say that they're leaving. Um, and here's something I picked up last night. This is um, insane. Th so this I picked up last night, I didn't know we were making this video, um, from Half Price Books, uh, one of Half Price Books in Austin. This is the Death Guard Codex for a friend of mine that's starting up Death Guard. It's 20 bucks. This retails for what, 45? Uh, yeah, 30 or 45, something like that. Yeah. I don't know exactly. Um, this, is, this is new, this is, it's out of the cellophane, but it's new. And they had a Dark Angels one in there for $13. I don't know anyone starting Dark Angels, so I left it for whoever might need it. But it's insane what you can pick up if you shop around. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so I suppose that brings us to the, the final part um, of this video, which is how you can actually profit um, so not only can you, uh, can you buy an army at cheap, but you can actually make money from it. Um, and it all comes down to uh, time value. You see, what happens is if you start trawling through these marketplaces and looking for stuff, you'll see deals. And they might be deals for armies that you don't necessarily want. And the big one that we were talking about just a moment ago is when someone's cashing out of a hobby. Um, I don't know about you, but if you're into the hobby and you have spent money on the hobby, you probably have a couple of boxes of unopened Games Workshop miniatures. Um, and most people don't know this, but Games Workshop have an amazing amazing refund policy, which is as long as the box is still in the cellophane, you can trade it for anything else of the same value, providing they still sell that miniature. So it doesn't work on the out of print stuff, but the current stuff. So I know that um, at one point I was going to build an entire Storm Raven army and I had four Storm Ravens that were going to be part of a force and then I didn't do anything with it. They, you know, they changed the rules on uh, feet on the ground and I was like, okay, I'm not going to build this army. And the Storm Ravens went into my, my storage room um, with a, a vision that one day I'll use them. Um, and so sure enough, I ended up putting two together. I put one together for one of my armies that just made sense for the channel. Then I put one together for my son because uh, someone was making fun of him that he didn't have any vehicles in his Dark Angel army. So that was two of them, but I had these other two left just sitting there and I was like, man, I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to use these. I'm not going to you know, build a flyer detachment out of them. And so I take them into my local games workshop and the Storm Ravens are expensive. And I'm like, hey, what can I do with this? And they're like, yo, you can trade this for anything you want that of equal value. So I got the new release that came out that day um, and I just switched it and I got the right thing. So Games Workshop has this amazing amazing policy, which means if you've got somebody cashing out in the hobby, somebody who really doesn't want their stuff and they don't want to trade it for more Games Workshop stuff, they just want to get cash and you're willing and you got a little bit of cash, you can purchase it off them. Then you can go into the hobby and you can trade them for anything typically things that other people want and then you can sell it to them at a slight discount from Games Workshop and make the difference between the two items. So that's one simple way that you can make money if you want to do it that way. An even easier way is to buy it and then relist it on a different group later on at a different price. Because like I said, that Grey Knight army that I got ended up being about 30 miniatures of, of actual Grey Knights, an assassin, a dreadnought and a storm raven. So I picked up all of that for a hundred bucks. If there were pieces of that army that I didn't want, I could list them individually on different groups or even on eBay and make a huge difference because I managed to cash out or can make a, a benefit from somebody else cashing out. Um, Kev, I know you have a, a bunch of other things that you've used like this. Do you have anything else that you want to add before we... Um, yeah, I just want to add very quickly, I guess. Um, another big saving you can make is on paint. Um, and I buy a mix of third-party paint and um, occasionally Games Workshop paint. If I want a very specific color and following a specific color scheme, then I'll buy... Games Workshop paint, particularly the layer paint, um, which is the, the, the thing that brings the bulk of the color. But I'll do uh, certainly all my base, uh, all my um, priming and, uh, and my base colors often with uh, just an acrylic paint palette I picked up from uh, Hobby Lobby. 
And then I'm a big fan of um, primer spray paints, black and white in particular. Um, I use the Krylon Ultra Flat Primer. Ultra Flat, not flat. Don't, I don't, made that mistake. Don't. There's a flat paint and primer, which um, in the right circumstances could, uh, could ruin some of the detail on your minis. Get the Ultra Flat uh, Primer only, or look for a very, very flat primer. Um, auto, there's an auto primer that's good as well. But stuff like that, instead of paying $20 for a spray paint from Games Workshop, you can pay five, six, seven, pick it up. Um, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, or, or whatever is not, I don't even know what you, where you go in the UK anymore to get this stuff, but uh, back home, maybe you can tell us in the comments um, what your choice is for, uh, you know, for, for spray paints. Yeah, and so that's it. So point being, there are ways to do this cheaper and easier. Um, a couple of other things I want to throw at the end that are just worth mentioning. If you're good at painting, there are people that will probably pay you in miniatures um, if you'll paint theirs. Um, so that's a way to like trade to be able to, to do it. Um, and again, if you're not good at painting, there are free tutorials online. We have a whole bunch um, of stuff that we give away in our Facebook group on how to paint, which you can follow. And you know, most people are just happy to have somebody paint this stuff. It doesn't have to be the best quality, but if you can get known as the local painter, um, and you know, you can have a deal where you know, you'll paint two miniatures if they'll give you one or, or what have you. Um, and so that's another way you can do it. So the point is, if you really wanna be in the hobby, there are ways that you can do it on low budget. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. And in fact, if you're entrepreneurial, it could actually make you money. So thanks ever so much for watching. If you've got any great tips for how people can uh, you know, get into the army um, and get into the hobby, should I say, on a budget, then please let us know in the comments below. Um, that's it for us, and we'll see you next time.